weeks ago, I received an email from Zach Childs from the Ask Zach channel, and Zach had recently acquired this 1964 AC-10 from Dan Strain of Danocaster Guitars. Now, Zach told me that this amplifier sounded amazing, but the only problem with it was it came with this homemade cabinet that was too tall, the material that was covering it was starting to deteriorate, and he was looking for something that was more in the proportions of the original cabinet, which you can see here. The original cabinet, in this case, is a 2x10 cabinet, but it's wider and shorter, and so Zach talked to me about, was it possible to make this cabinet in a 1x12 version? So our goals for this project really were to create a cabinet that was more vintage correct and had the right look and proportions, but also one that was lighter because the original one was made of 3 quarter inch MDF. And in this case, we're going to be using half inch birch for the actual cabinet, use 3 8 inch for the baffle board. So after the planning stages, the first step is to get the plywood and start cutting that to shape for the actual cabinet. And I did that using this 9-ply Russian birch, which is really nice stuff, really easy to work with, nice and straight, and doesn't have a lot of voids. One memorable part about this build is we had a huge snowstorm hit the country, and in our area up here in Pennsylvania dropped about two feet of snow. As you can see from the footage here, we had quite a nor'easter going. There were some other storms also during the course of this build that resulted in even snow on the ground in Nashville, which is definitely rare for them. I wanted to make sure that the corners on this cabinet were as strong as possible, so I used finger joints like I had in the past in several other of my builds, and I used this screw advanced finger joint jig to do that. And as you can see here, what it does is it allows you to cut these fingers and then move the material over with a set of wooden gears that advances it on a screw. This is a really cool design by Matthias Wandel, and you can find videos on YouTube under his name, Matthias Wandel. I'll also put links in the description for plans of how to build this jig. One of the nice features of this jig is you can put several pieces together at once and make your cuts and make sure that those teeth are going to be aligned with each other. Here I'm going through a dry fit just to make sure everything lines up and there weren't any mistakes in the cuts. So one thing I'm looking for here in these finger joints is I want them tight but not too tight. I want to make sure that there's a good resistance fit but I don't want all the glue to be squeezed out if it's too tight once I try to go put those together. I use 3 quarter inch pine material and here I'm joining it on the old delta joiner to make sure I have one side that's nice and square and nice and flat and that lets me cut it on the table saw so I get these 3 quarter inch pine strips. Those are going to be used to support the front baffle board and also to support the back panels. Now we're back to the cabinet here and I'm working on the top of the cabinet and I'm drilling out the corners where the control panel will be for the actual amp. I'm using a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit to do that and this will allow me then to go in with a bandsaw and easily cut out the rest of the material. Next I had to cut the slots for the brass vents in the top of the amplifier and it's really important for these Vox amplifiers that they have these vents because the tubes are completely enclosed inside of the amplifier unlike some other designs. So the vents are crucial to allow the heat from the tubes to dissipate up and out of the amplifier and here what I'm doing is drilling a small hole not all the way through but that's going to give me just enough space to allow the tabs from the vent to bend outward and secure them in place once the amp is finished and tolexed. There's kind of two ways that you could cut the holes or these slots for the vents. One is using a jigsaw, but I find sometimes that a jigsaw is not quite as accurate and leaves kind of a rough cut depending on the quality of the jigsaw. So here I'm using what's called a scroll saw and this allows you to take the blade on and off. And you saw me previously drill a hole in the center of this slot and I'm able to place that blade through the hole then reattach it on the top and the bottom of the scroll saw and it makes a much more accurate cut. Once all the work on the top of the cabinet was done, we're ready to glue it together. And I'm using just a paintbrush here and a liberal amount of glue to make sure that we get a nice strong joint on each of the corners. Once I made sure the four corners were nice and square, I installed the 3 quarter inch pine strips I had prepared earlier using screws and glue. Once the glue had dried, it was time to round over the corners of the amplifier, and I used this homemade router table. It's just a half inch round over bit, 
and I can just clamp this to the end of my workbench and allows me to get nice rounded over edges on the inside and outside corners. Another thing that has to be prepared on this cabinet is to cut a channel for the gold piping that goes all the way around the amp in the front and the back. And so that's what I'm doing here with a very fine finishing blade on the table saw. And I'm carefully uh, cutting this groove and then I have to angle it a little bit to get the rest of the corners. And I got to do that carefully so that I don't have any chip out or I don't make any mistakes and cut that too wide or too deep. The table saw can't reach the inside of this corner here, so I had to do it by hand using a dovetail saw very carefully, and I created a groove just by going along the edge and then cutting out the middle just a little bit. I didn't need to go very deep for this groove for the piping, so it's just something uh, I had to do by hand here, and it didn't take me very long to do and to get a, a nice groove there for the piping just using this very sharp dovetail saw. Next I'm preparing the material for the baffle board and right here you're seeing me use half inch plywood but later that would go to a 3 8 plywood just so I had enough room to make sure everything fit with that one 12 inch speaker. And I, again I used the scroll saw to make a more accurate cut to cut out the space for the speaker. And I also kept in the speaker protector uh, which is that vertical strip you can see there in the middle uh, that's a traditional Vox look. And I use some black acrylic paint for the inside to finish it off. In carefully studying some of the pictures of those vintage Vox cabinets, I noticed that they had a curved inside corner on the front baffle board and back panels. So to do that, I used a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit on the drill press, drilled a hole in the wood, and then I carefully drew a square around that hole, and that gave me a corner with a rounded inside edge that had that radius of an inch and a quarter. Once those corners were dried in place, then it was time to run the front and back edge of the cabinet over the half inch roundover bit. And when you do this, it doesn't actually get the very tip of the corner, so that you have to sand by hand. About this time, I was very excited to see in the mail a package from Zach, and that was his 1964 Vox AC10 chassis. This would allow me to get a perfect fit for this amplifier and make sure that everything was going to line up correctly. Now, considering the fact that we're building a brand new cabinet for this vintage amplifier, I wanted to make sure I gave it a good cleaning, and it was returned to him in better condition than I received it in. To remove all the dirt and oxidation, I'd use WD-40, and I usually spray that on a rag or a bristle brush and carefully go over all the surfaces. And if you get into all those cracks, it helps to seal it and make sure that you don't get future rust in any exposed metal. And it will also clean up all that dirt and grime that uh, has formed over the years. It's amazing how much dirt and dust collect on these vintage knobs, and you can see here by giving it a coating of WD-40 and then using a brush to get into those cracks, I'm able to really clean it up and make it look almost like new. While I was at it, I gave the chassis a good once over and used WD-40, some rags and brushes to try to clean off all that accumulated dirt and debris that was in all those tight spaces. And although there was some oxidation on the chassis, I was able to clean it up and you could see the AC-10 stamp here and the serial number. Next it was time to Tolex the cabinet, and to Tolex the cabinet and film at the same time is kind of tricky, so I didn't film a lot of that process, but I'll show you some basics here, and you can see how I did one of the corners. But basically, I use contact cement, you put it on both surfaces, you wait about 20 minutes for it to get tacky, and then you got to make sure you put those surfaces together. So you only have a certain amount of work time available before it flashes off, and then it loses its stickiness, and then you have to redo it can see how I cut the corner there by folding it together and then cutting it at the 45 degree angle. 
Here I'm cutting the groove for the piping, and the piping is a gold piping that is traditional on these Vox amplifiers. Uh, hold it down with some staples on the very end, and then carefully wrap it around. Um, this is kind of tricky because you actually have some material that's in that groove plus this piping, so it's a little tricky to get it to sit just right. Once I was done with the cabinet, it's time to work on the baffle board, and here I'm installing the grill cloth, and this is the traditional Vox diamond pattern. Getting the grill cloth to align just perfectly is difficult and challenging because the material does stretch in two directions, but here, once I get it in place, I'm attaching it with a staple gun. I also use staples to attach the white piping that goes along the outside edge of the baffle board, and it's a good time now to mention that I had to undersize the baffle board by about an eighth of an inch on every side so that it would fit just right inside the cabinet. Once I was done with the white piping, last step is to trim off the excess grill cloth material and then go for a test fit. This is one of those terrifying yet exciting moments where you're really hoping that you have a perfect fit on this baffle board. You've done so much work on it, it's just right. Does it fit? Because if it's a little oversized, it's not going to fit in there and you're not going to be able to force it in there and it won't have the proper look. So I was just thrilled that it fit perfectly and it had the proper recess of about an eighth of an inch all the way around and it really looked nice and slick. I mean this is what people are really going to see on this amplifier all the time so it's got to look perfect. Next it's time to install the logo and I looked at a lot of pictures of vintage Vox amplifiers to try to get an idea of where that logo was exactly and since this one's a modified cabinet it's not actually a reproduction of something they ever produced I had to come up with my own placement for the logo and to do that I used a template to help me drill the holes and those holes were lined up with the three plastic posts from the logo and yes it is a little scary drilling into the front of this perfect baffle board that you just finished and you know fits and now you're drilling into the front of it but it's part of the process uh, you just have to move on with it and uh, just plan everything out and make sure you don't make any mistakes at this point because it would be devastating if you put this on crooked um, or it was misplaced in some way but luckily it turned out great it looked perfect it was nice and straight and I think I got the placement right I think it looks it looks vintage it looks the part and I really didn't take a lot of measurements on that I just kind of eyed it up and to me that looked right sometimes I get a little carried away with the details here and here's an example where I took the foot I drilled a hole out so that it would sit exactly flush on the bottom of the amplifier to cover up the staples that hold in the gold piping. You're going to see me marking a lot of locations here for the holes I have to drill and I'm using a combination square to make sure I have the same distance from the edge to do that. And then I'm using this tool which I made out of a piece of spring steel and this is like a ice pick or an awl. Very handy for starting those holes and making sure that you get them lined up perfectly. I got to mark the locations for the baffle board next and to do that I put the screws in from the back side so that the tip of the screw sticks out a little bit then I reinstall the baffle board and apply pressure so that the tips of the screw leave a mark. Now we're getting to the final stages of putting this together and you can see the top panel here and the bottom panel and the details of putting the brass screws in the back with some finish washers. The back panels are both made from the 3 8 birch plywood and you can see here I'm installing the speaker to make sure I get a good test fit and we're going to test out the cabinet and make sure it sounds good. There's no weird vibrations happening anywhere. You can see here some details of how the tray slides in and the back panel holds it in place. That Vox amplifier tag you see on the back is the real deal. It's an AC30 tag that was on the old cabinet. So here it is, all cleaned up, ready to go, shipped back to Zach. I'm about to test it out, but make sure you check out Zach's video where he goes through the history of these amplifiers and you get the treat of hearing him play through this amplifier.
thanks. I really appreciate you watching this video and taking the time to check out this awesome amplifier and what it took to build this cabinet. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down in the comments section. Make sure you like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And until next time, take care.